Fasting, it does have some value, but not for the things you think. Fasting is terrible for fat loss, but it's good for other things. In today's episode, we're going to cover fasting, all of it. This is a master class. Here we go. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's been a minute since we've actually gone on deep on fasting and has remained uh, one of the most popular and trendy ways of dieting still. I think oh. that... Yeah. I, I don't think a month goes by where I don't hear about a family member, a friend, acquaintance uh, that is now fasting, is incorporating uh, some form of fasting into their plan. And still, it is always the for the same reasons. Yep. It mm -hmm. still is never for the reasons that I feel like we've talked about on this show so many times on how we recommend people use it either uh, for their clients, if you're a trainer or for yourself. Uh, there's still this trend around it as a great weight loss tool. Yeah, yeah. it's um, so obviously if you, you probably know what fasting is, but just to loosely define it, it's to go without food for a significant portion of time. So typically longer than you would normally go without food. So from breakfast to lunch, that's technically a fast. But when people talk about fasting, it's typically for, you know, six, eight, 10 hours or days without food. Um, and usually they'll drink water. So most fasts are, are what are considered water fast. The reason why I think fasting is still popular is because it's it uh, works. it's one rule. <laughs> well, no, it, it well it doesn't. It we'll get into tricks calories. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll get into we'll get into why why it's terrible. If for you that, don't but. eat food, guess what? You lose yeah. weight. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but it, it's one rule, right? It's Magic. one like like the challenge that people run into with diet is eating a really healthy diet for you that works for you. I mean, it's, it's complex. It requires a journey of exploration. It requires learning. It requires relearning. It requires getting rid of old ideas and concepts. It requires a good relationship with yourself and it's, it takes time to develop, but people don't want time. They don't want to take time. They want it to happen right now. And the more simple a diet seems in terms of its rules, the more popular it is. If you look at the popularity of diets, right. you could literally rank them in terms of. Do you think that's what basic it is? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's what? what that's why. Made, that's why Atkins the, the adherence because of the simplicity. Yeah, of it. that's why Atkins crushed up. What you know at first? Yes, it was counter the message, but it was also just don't eat carbs. Oh my god, I could do that. Well, that's and it's it's such a paradigm uh, shattering thing for a lot of people to uh, step away from a meal. Uh, just that fact alone, mm -hmm. like because it's like so ingrained in culture and society and everything's socially wrapped into us eating food to uh, get yourself sort of out of that um, that formula for a minute, you, you become a bit of a, an evangelist and, and it becomes something that um, it worked for you. So therefore, um, you know, I, I think everybody could benefit from it. And also too, I was able to lose weight. And so that's what they focus in on is the losing weight part of it. Yeah. I mean, I think Sal, you're really on to something that it's what makes diets the most popular is less about how healthy they were, how even successful they are for people, but let more so it's simplicity, the simplicity mm -hmm. of, of it, right? Like, like I just only think, eat this, don't eat this and then do whatever you want. It so it. follows the pattern of your clients, right? Like yeah. how many, how many people would hire you and just be like, just tell me what to do or write yeah. this down. Like they, they, they don't want, they don't very few people, well, not everybody, but very few people, hire a trainer and say, I really want to learn how to properly feed myself and exercise correctly. There's a small portion, there's a percentage, but most people are like, I want to do this. I need to do this. I have this thing coming up. Yeah. Can you get me there? I'll, and I'll pay you. What Just tell me what do. I do. have to push. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. the extent of what they want to learn. Now, fasting is, is actually, if you were to consider it a diet, right? Um, it's, it's actually probably the oldest or one of the oldest documented quote unquote diets that there is. Uh, fasting, recorded document documentation of fasting goes back as far as 450 or 500 BC. It's a present in every major world religion, not just the Abrahamic ones, right? Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. It's present in all those. It's also present in Buddhism. It's uh, present in uh, many Eastern uh, religions. Um, it's present even in religions and practices that are not so popular. New Ageism even used uh, fasting. So it's it's got some value for sure. Things that that span culture and time, things that are communicated um, and put into practice 
in cultures that didn't communicate or, or trade off with each other, um, you know that there's some wisdom there. So there's definitely some wisdom around fasting. Um, but again, it's it's been turned into a diet plan. It's typical, right? Modern uh, society will take something with some truth or some wisdom and they'll find a way to turn it into something for you know fat loss or you know something like that along those lines. Now, I have a, a really good experience with fasting. Um, mm. And mm, I same. believe that I fall in the category of people who benefited <clears throat> from this practice. So just a little context, you know, I grew up um, and I started working out for a lot of different reasons, but one of them was I was very insecure. I had some body image issues. I thought I was too skinny. I thought I was too skinny, not strong enough. And so I started working out to try to get bigger, to gain size, to gain weight. And, and pretty much uh, with like no holds barred, like whatever it took to, to gain weight and size, I was uh, game for. And I did this for years and years and years. In fact, the first time I heard about fasting from the perspective of it being a diet, because, you know, we've, we had clients that would sometimes talk about fasting. It wasn't very common. So I knew what it was, but I didn't know, I, I really like consider it a diet or a way of, of, of being for health until I was in my, I want to say mid to late twenties. So at this point I'd already been lifting weights consistently for well over 10 years. I'd been a trainer and a coach for, you know, eight years or something like that. Um, so I'd been doing it for a while, still fueled very strongly by insecurities. And I remember reading about something called the warrior diet. This was the first one that I tried. And I remember reading in at the time it was bodybuilding.com had these forums and people would be like, Oh my God, I only eat once a day and I haven't lost any muscle and I feel so good. And I have all this energy and I'm actually, I feel great. My workouts are, are better. And you know, the thing that stuck out to me was I haven't lost any muscle. So my fear up until that point, it had been so hammered into my head that I had to eat every two hours. That was a message in the, the bodybuilding space or the muscle building world was don't go without protein for two more longer than two hours. Otherwise your body's going to eat away at muscle. I literally believe this. So I would eat every two hours, literally eight to eight meals a day I would, I would have. Now I read this thing about fasting. People are saying they're not losing muscle. I became intrigued and I tested it once. I remember it took a lot of courage for me to not eat all day, right? So I was gonna eat at night. So I remember I started that day off, no food. And I remember going out through, throughout the whole day and feeling okay, I actually felt okay. Like, oh, this is weird. I don't, I'm not like losing my mind. I don't have these crazy hunger pains. I'm not going nuts with cravings. And then I worked out in the late afternoon and I did have a great workout. And then later that night I had a feast. I ate this massive meal and I said, let me try this again. And I did it over and over again. And to my surprise, muscle did not completely melt off my body. I felt good. In fact, I had more energy throughout the day. There's, there's reasons why that happened to me. And what it did for me personally is it broke the chains between me and this insecure attachment to food where <clears throat> no matter where I went, I had to have a protein bar on me or a shake or something. Cause God forbid I went two hours without food this was going to be a bad thing. So it was so revealing to me and so transformative from that standpoint that, oh, I don't have to eat every two hours. I don't. It, it's not going to, my body's not going to fall apart and I'm not going to become the thing that I fear most, which is this skinny kid. So that was really the benefit that I got from it. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video, the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale this month. Maps Bands is half off, and the Hard Gainer bundle of programs is also half off. You can find them both by clicking on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So like you, I had a very similar experience with it. Now, I did, I did experiment with it later on in my career, so I had already gone through that transition as a trainer where I realized that most people that would hire me, even the ones that wanted to lose 30, 40, 50 pounds, uh, were, were under consuming nutrients, weren't getting, they were missing fiber. They were missing protein. They were missing healthy fats. Like I'd already pieced that together. And so I, I knew that 
when I experiment with myself, like, oh, this is not for most of my clients already. Like I, I already, when someone hires me, even the people that I know need to lose weight, this is not something that I want to use as a tool for them. But what I had was the same thing that you had was I had this fear of, oh my God, if I'm not feeding myself every couple hours and hitting my protein intake every single day, muscle just falls off my body. That's how I felt. And I thought, and it completely shattered my paradigm when I started to fast and, and incorporate that. And then I realized like, oh, who is this really good for? And I found that there's got to be a lot of clients that ha- that are like me. I found that in the bodybuilding space, your, your bikini rife with that. It is yeah. full of those people yeah. that have that have like, do not miss a meal, carry their mm-hmm. protein bars and shakes everywhere they go or their Tupperware, right? Like there's a whole industry built around never missing a meal. And those were the people that I found, oh, okay, this is somebody I'm going to help you know, teach that they can break away like I had struggled with too. And so that was the first type of client. The second type of client, because and this is again, through my experience of realizing what it would do for me was people that had gut issues and helping them kind of reset mm-hmm. that because they didn't know where it's coming from or where they're having this bloat or stuff like that. And just putting them on this, you know, two day or three day fast to completely reset themselves and then slowly reintroduce food mm-hmm. was a really cool way to help people have insight to maybe you're eating foods that you have a, a intolerance to and you don't even know it. Let's try and incorporate a fast and see what happens. So it became a definitely a tool in my tool belt towards the back half of my career. But those are the only two people that I ever would apply it to. Never would I apply it to somebody who came to me and said, I want to lose weight. Yeah, that was my first introduction was um, the benefit that I received was the the break and the digestive break uh, and, and realizing that... <laughs> um, what I was feeling wasn't normal all the time. Uh, and it, it helped to kind of um, highlight a certain things that were going on with uh, my digestive system, like at night, having heartburn, having a lot of this bloat and a lot of things I just would uh, equate to, well, this is just what happens after I eat. Uh, and, and also too, just um, that same kind of fear that you guys were describing is always having to, to seek out food because um, another thing psychologically I had to work through was that whole hanger, uh, factor, which I know is, is it's totally like a joke and, and everybody kind of tends to blame the fact that they're hungry. And so it, it automatically gives them this sort of, uh, freedom to be an asshole. Uh, and for me, like I, I, you know, would use that as an excuse and I, I would lean into that and, and this, this helped to kind of teach me like, um, Going through that natural hunger signal process, it's a natural thing that actually too long enough would go away. Like it would just, it would go away. Uh, And um, a lot of times too, I was dehydrated. And so that was a huge factor as well that I kind of sifted through with all that. So anyway, it it just, in terms of like figuring out a lot of this, this uh, self-reflection and Uh, being more introspective, I think that was the biggest value I received. Yeah. Now it it became popular for one reason, because people saw that they could lose weight by fasting. Yeah. That's why it became popular because like I said, it's, it's a very old um, diet uh, strategy or approach, not for weight loss, but just one for uh, many other reasons, which we'll get to, but it became popular because it was a simple not easy, but a simple way to lose weight. Oh, this is, there's just one step only eat within a four hour window. Um, for example. And then of course it got backed up by scientists and and studies that showed that it, it increased or sped up cell autophagy and reduced inflammation. And you had all these blood markers that would improve, which we now know, um, are not independent of just being in a calorie deficit. In other words, just eating in a calorie deficit produces the same effects from that standpoint as fasting. So there's really nothing special about fasting from a health, fit, physical, I should say, health perspective um, or even a, a weight loss uh, perspective. It also did something else psychologically to people that we piece together as as trainers over years, which was it gave people the, the freedom to kind of eat what they want so long as they st- stayed in that window. That's right. Mm. And we learned later on, like 
why di- one of the reasons why diets failed was people have this weird relationship with food that if you told them like you can't have cookies or you can't do these things, then they would have this like restrict and then binge type sort of, of relationship. Rebel. Yeah, and they would want to rebel. It was natural for you to want to rebel. This was a very important. This was something that was pieced together really for me with fasting too, because I realized how many people had success with just sticking to this. And part of that is is because they also gave themselves the freedom. That's of right. like, I'm not going to tell myself I can't have a cookie or I can't eat this fast food or I can't have this ice cream. I'm just going to say I got to eat in this window. And as long as I just think that, I still have the freedom to do these things I want. There's something important there that you need to understand that that's why other types of diets fail so hard is when you put these restrictions and say, I can't, I can't, I can't eventually you want to rebel. That was important to learn that as a coach and a trainer. And mm-hmm. part of why I flipped the whole diet thing with my clients on its head and said, instead of telling my clients, they can't do these things, let me focus on telling them what I need them to go get. And that was a, a, a massive shift in my coaching. Yeah. So, so fasting for fat loss is a terrible approach. By the way, the success rate of fasting for fat loss versus the success rate of any other diet for fat loss is about identical, meaning about 90% of the people who lose weight using fasting, or veganism, or if it fits your macros, or whatever, you know, paleo, whatever. About 90% of them, when they lose weight following a specific quote-unquote diet, they gain it back. They gain it back within a year or two. And uh, I bet the data would show that the the small percentage that's left over eventually gains it back as well. That's just my own experience. So that's that's rule number one. That's that's number one. Why you want to wouldn't want to do it for fat loss. We now have the data. It's very clear. It's not more effective than other approaches at all. Now, I would argue that it has like many, like the the most restrictive diets, the ones with the most hard set rules tend to produce the most dysfunctional behaviors that I tend to see. Fasting for fat loss, when somebody says, I want to lose weight, so I'm going to fast, almost always in my experience uh, with people results in a restrict binge behavior. Mm-hmm. Don't eat, don't eat, don't eat. Look at the clock, look at the clock, look at the clock. Time to eat. Yeah. And then they go nuts. And what happens over time, and maybe at first you're somewhat aware of this, but then you find this is what ha- ends up happening. What I've seen, slowly the eating period becomes, you know, okay, I'm eating this much food. And then, oh, I got to eat more food. And then how much can I fit in this eating window? And then I can eat whatever I want and then push it. And what you're actually doing with that is you're training a behavior, you're conditioning yourself to go from nothing to anything, nothing to anything. And that's what we're constantly battling when we're working with people is that on, off, on, off. There is no on, off when it comes to eating in a healthy way that's sustainable. It doesn't work that way. It's always on. And I don't mean always on in the sense that it's always perfect. It's always your diet and it's always your behaviors. But fasting for weight loss almost always results in that strange don't eat, eat anything or eat terribly type model. And that's that's just a bad uh, a bad thing to train. It also exacerbates what I had seen already in in normal clients that were trying to lose weight. Uh, most people that would come to me were over consuming processed carbohydrates, sugars, saturated fats, not eating enough protein, not getting enough fiber, not eating enough vegetables and fruits and getting a good ba- so they were missing all these micronutrients and in a macronutrient when you include protein and healthy fats, and they were missing those things, over consuming the bad foods, and then you put them in this constricted window. Th- then they had an even harder time getting that fiber, the protein, healthy, all those things. But and then and they would just over consume even more to your point of the binging habits of those bad foods. Yeah. Look, so now you've you've made it like if I gave a client a twelve hour window all day basically to eat all these foods and they were missing all these things that are important and crucial to their overall health and they were missing that and yet struggling with still weight loss. And then I say, okay, now you can only eat in four hours. It just made that worse. I mean, it just made it more difficult for them to hit their protein intake, more difficult to be consistent with their fiber and more difficult to hit healthy fats. They were just over consuming processed look, foods. Look, a petite, so we, okay, let me back up. Okay. Here's some, something that data is very clear on with diet, a high protein diet, one in which you're eating close to a gram of protein per pound of body weight in a normal lean individual. So if you're overweight, it would be your target weight. So 
just just to loosely say it, uh, roughly a gram of protein per pound of body weight, okay? So that, the data shows clearly all things being controlled, everything else being controlled, calories, exercise, lifestyle, everything else, the high protein version results in more muscle, less fat, more satiety, meaning less cravings, less hunger, better insulin uh, levels or, uh, uh, or blood sugar levels. So it's just superior, okay? So this is a fact across the board. doesn't matter if you're vegan, carnivore, paleo, whatever, how, however you like to eat. High protein across the board in studies is just better. Okay, that being said, a petite woman who weighs 100 pounds, okay? So I'm using a, 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 a woman, Jesus, a small woman. Say 120, 130. I'm going to say 100. Small. I'm going to say 100. A, somebody who does not represent the vast majority of people listening right now, okay? If this woman put her eating window at four hours, that means she has to get 100 grams of protein in four hours. Yeah. Okay, that's hard. Yeah. That would mean she would have to eat three, 50, six, three, three six ounce chicken breast. Yeah. Imagine okay. that. In a four hour, for a 100 pound woman. Now, if you're a 150 pound woman, which is average, good luck. I would have struggle eating 150 grams of protein in four hours. Yeah. Now, a 200 pound man, like, you forget it. You're not going to hit your protein targets or it's going to be really hard. Or what you're going to do, which a lot of people do when they fast like this, is they'll eat as much protein as they can. They stuff themselves like, oh, I got to get the protein because I only have a four hour eating window. Then they throw a shake on top of it. And now again, they're doing that, that binge type yeah, of thing. Yep. Now you throw on top of it, like you said, fiber or healthy food. Good luck trying to hit those targets in that short period of time, unless you're actively stuffing yourself. So literally think of this for a second. Starve for 12 hours or however many hours to, you know that you go on the fast and then cram because I got to get these protein targets in that four hour window, which is by that's, that's one type of fasting. I know there's different varieties, but that's one of the more popular ones. Good luck. Not going to work. And what ends up happening, the data shows this is that when they compare fasting to other calorie restricted type models, they're very similar. Although fasting ready for this trends towards muscle loss. Mm -hmm. It tends to trend towards for this reason. Loss. Yeah. For this reason, for this right exact here. reason, right? This here is easy. probably the main reason. One hundred percent. If I'm telling you right now that every single client, I can't even think of a client who hired me that was overweight, that we needed to get on a, a workout plan, need to start, and I assessed their diet, they were under consuming protein with twelve hours. Yeah. So what in the world would make me think that same client? put in a protocol where they only have a four hour window would now all of a sudden hit their protein yeah, intake. No. Good luck. It's hard enough. Yeah, no, it's, it's totally, it's totally difficult. And that's, and so, and then they, but yet you see weight off the scale come down. So yeah, you restricted calories and temporarily. Yeah, the, nothing the, magic. Yeah. The scale went down, but your metabolism just got slower. Yeah. Your body fat percentage probably changed very little, if at all, because you lost as much muscle as you lost fat. So you're in a worse predicament than what you were when you started the fast. Yeah. And uh, and again, I think people like it when they compare it to other diets because it's simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they like it initially. Almost nobody, you know, two, three years later says, oh yeah, I love it. It was great. You know, they're always initially, like, yeah. yeah, in a short window. Yeah, exactly. Um, now here's the reasons why fasting um, has some value. It has tremendous value for detachment. Okay. Mm. This is why it's present in every spiritual religion. Yeah. This is the purpose of it. In, Th this in all, is the, all religions. This is the point. Now, why, why would fasting and detachment from food, like, why would that be valuable? Well, one of them is what we talked about. I got to eat all the time. If I don't eat, oh my God, I'm going to feel crappy or I'm going to lose muscle. That helped me practice a detachment from this thing that I felt chained to. But then there's also this, like, okay, um, I'm not eating for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or I'm not eating when I'm stressed out, or I'm not eating when I'm watching TV. What do I do with myself? What do mm -hmm. I do with my feelings? What do I, how do I handle the situation? And what do I reveal about myself when I take away the most commonly used uh, you know, method of medication, which is food. Everybody medicates with food. So now that I don't have that, what am, what's coming up for me? How do I feel? Uh, what's happening? Yeah. And, then, and then when you go back to eating again, there are things that tend to be revealed to you. By the way, if you have, I need, we didn't say this in the beginning. I'll say this right now. If you have a history of eating disorders where you restrict yourself, anything, any, anything that even resembles bulimia or anorexia, already off the table. Run from fasting methodologies yeah. as fast as you can. It almost always will put you back into your eating disorder. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, well, now that kind of ruins what I was going to say. But <laughs> <laughs> I was going to equate uh, fasting in terms of like stepping away from it, from the detachment part of it is meditation and, yeah. and what that, uh, the benefits with that in terms of like stimulus and just constantly inundating your senses with all of the stimulus all the time. And now with blue light and all these other um sort of uh, 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 distractions, distractions the out yeah. there. Yeah. The, the, that height hype up your stress levels. Um, this can also have that, that physiological effect by stepping away from food for a bit. Well, yeah. this also brings us to the next one, which is comparing the difference between like short fast and long fast. And this does bring up like the example where I would allow a client who is trying to say lose 50 pounds and she's like, I really, I, I hear what you guys say. I, I have some things I want to, I want to detach. I've abused food in the past and I definitely want to be somebody who, and I want to use it for the meditative purposes. Like, you know, do you think I could use, it? I would allow a client like once a month to do a, a, a single day fast 24 mm -hmm. hours, right? Yeah. For that purpose, I like, like the we're, we're, do, we're not doing this because it's going to speed up our results in your, in your fat loss journey. But I do see the benefits of going for an entire day, restricting from food, detaching from food so that you can focus on meditating and realize that you don't need to reach for that thing all the time. You're totally okay going 24 hours and not eating. And I think there's a, a lot of value for that reason. And that would be the only way I would let that client who is trying to lose 50 pounds because I would need the other 29 days of the month focused on hitting your macro targets and your micro targets yeah. because most people trying to lose weight struggle with doing that. And I would want most of our time focusing on getting that with a, okay, once a month we can interrupt our, our, our diet plan or our month or our routine to do this complete fast so that we can look at other aspects, work inward yeah. in our life. Yeah. If you want to use fasting for what it's valuable for, then all your fasting needs to be a long fast. Now, okay. What does that mean? Long Long is, uh, is subjective. It needs to be a fast that challenges you, okay? So if if skipping breakfast is a big challenge for you, then that would be your fast. That would be the way you detach from something that you're, you're so tied to, right? If fasting for breakfast and lunch is a challenge for you, then that would be your fast. Many people probably, I would say, could start with a 24-hour fast, but you could go pretty damn long. Um, you know, people can fast for a week, without food. By the way, make sure you're not underweight if you attempt a fast that's longer than 24 or 48 hours because then you can run into some trouble. Um, but otherwise, you could go for a long time. And so the question is, like, how long should I fast? Okay, you've made the point. It's not for weight loss. I get it. That makes a lot of sense. It's good for detachment reasons or spiritual reasons or self-reflection uh, you know, type reasons. Um, then how long should I fast? You want to challenge yourself. That's what brings out the value in the fast is, you know, obviously you don't eat when you sleep. Well, that doesn't challenge you. So that, but that, even though that's technically a fast, right? So it's like, okay, what's a length of time that I feel like I'm going to be able to start to reap some of the benefits, the detachment, the reflection, the, I'm not reaching for food because I, I can't. So I got to deal with my feelings right now, or it's lunchtime. Okay. I always typically go get that thing. And now I'm not going to, what does that feel like? How do I feel? How is that causing my emotions to change? Am I more productive? Am I less productive? What is this uh, bringing up for me? You know, that's the, that's kind of how you want to view the whole thing, but a, a, a successful fast or one that's going to benefit you in that way is one that challenges you. And so the length of time is dependent uh, on that for the individual. Now, uh, people always ask how to prepare for a fast. I do want to comment just uh, as we get into preparing the groups of people that are most successful with fasts people who tend to be able to stick to it and repeat it are people who do it for religious reasons. There's your, there's your, there's your clue right there. That's the real value. Like people, you know, you know, um, Islam, people who practice Islam do this every year, every mm -hmm. single, in fact, they do a fast. It's uh, what is it? Sun up to sundown. They don't even drink. They're not even allowed fluids. And yet a, a large chunk of them is successful at doing it because they're doing it for spiritual reasons. There's also a culture behind it, so you have support with the people around you. Well, you've you've highlighted uh, vegans before. Vegans that had the most success. You're fasting from meat. It's the same. It's the same yeah, concept. the ones that do it for animal for to save animals. That's right. Believe. They're the ones that right, are right. successful. Yeah, right. People who do it for a diet, they fail. Right? right. So, so how do you prepare for a fast? Well, 
There's nothing special you need to do with your diet. This is where this is where people who sell fasting kits tend to profit, oh, right? Man. They're like, oh, you know, take our fasting preparation supplements or take these pills during your fast, or here's your fat your 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 fasting breaking, you know, program that you need to do. You know, so they surround this because fasting is like, how do you make money off of eating nothing, right? By the <laughs> way, if you're one of those people who's listening to this and you drink BCAAs during your fast. Because you're you're trying to not yeah, lose muscle, you're, not fasting. you're doing it the wrong way. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're again you you are the person who I want to fast completely because you, you have marketing. the same silly fear that I had all the time of going like, oh god, if I don't eat for 24 hours, muscles going to fall off yeah. of me. So if you're wanting to do fasting for purposes like that and detachment, then you don't need to be drinking BCAAs, okay, or some supplement that someone tried to sell you that this is how you should do a fast. All you need is water. That's it. Just drink some water all day long. Yeah, and add some and, and add some electrolytes. I'll say that uh, definitely add some sodium because uh, going without food will deplete your body of electrolytes, and you may yeah. find that'll you, help with this shaky kind of feeling. Yeah, too. headaches, yeah, the headache, low blood fatigue. pressure, all that stuff uh, actually makes a big difference. Literally, put like we work with a company called Element. Put that in your water, or literally put like salt in your a little bit of salt in your water. That'll make a big difference. All right, so how to prepare for a fast? The way you prepare is you set your intention. Yeah. You prepare your mind, you prepare your psyche or your spirit, however you want to look at it. And you say to yourself, Wednesday, for example, I'm going to fast. My intention is to deal with my feelings instead of medicating myself with food. Or my intention is to reflect on how I am as a partner or, a, mm -hmm. uh, or as a parent or as, a, you know, as somebody's child or, or as a friend. My intention is to go without, to deal with my negative feelings, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That's how you prepare for a fast, is you go into it with an intention. Now, the intention may change, just like anytime you do something that's pro-growth, something might reveal itself. But having the intention really um, adds value and meaning to the thing you're about to do. If you don't do it, if you don't go in with a some kind of intention, <clears throat> you actually run the risk of falling into the Oh, I feel smaller. Oh, I think I'm losing weight. Uh oh, this and you you fall into you may fail fall into that trap. You may say to yourself, I'm doing this for the right reasons, but then you may find that you lost five pounds of water weight, you feel smaller, yeah. not as bloated. Oh, I like this. This is this is the this is why I'm You're gonna, gonna keep fight doing all this. the noise in your head that's telling you to go back to food and and it's going to help to kind of resolve a lot of this uncomfortableness that you're feeling. Uh, so to, to place your mind somewhere where it's very focused, you know, even if it's journaling, you know, just having gratitude and kind of writing things down, you're grateful for something that's like really directed and focused will really help through that process. I, I do have a, a small, uh, you know, minor food tip going in too. A mistake I've seen happen when people are, are going into their first like 24 hour fast is they decide to have their, their last meal, like the last supper, like, you it's know, just like before, they go super busy like before people go to rehab. <laughs> yes. And so they, they go that's so common carb, heavy yeah. ice cream, candy treat. Like they go all out on that. Um, it just and makes them feel more yeah, shitty. Yeah, yeah. It actually will make the fast more difficult. Um, I've found, and by the way, I know that speaking from experience, like I've done that. I've gone mm -hmm. and like had the big burger fries, like an ice cream meal before I go. The cravings are like exponential. Yes. They, it actually makes the cravings that much more difficult over the next 24 hours versus doing a, a good whole food, healthy high fat, high protein type of meal that's minimal carbohydrates or none going into your last meal, you'll actually have an easier time, in my opinion, going through that 24 hours than if you go like, oh, this is my last meal and I'm going to go all out. No, that's if, yeah, and that's if you want That's I, I think that's a healthy approach because you're going in. So here's, here's the thing. So what Adam's talking about, if you're doing this to make the fast easier, okay, that's fine, but that's not quite as valuable as the following. I'm going into this fast with intention. I want to stop self-medicating with food or I want to stop hating myself. If you go into the fast with that intention, you're not going to lead into the fast with a massive meal because the intention has nothing to do with the fact that I'm eating, not eating. It's more like I'm going to deal with this thing. So that's fine to do that because you want to make the fast easier. But the truth is if you go in with a true intention, you're not going in like it's your last hurrah. Better get this last pizza meal in before I go into my fast, it probably won't happen 
if you have the right intention uh, going into the fast. Now, the, 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 the last question, the second question people ask is always how to get out of a fast. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the simple yeah. answer is eat again, but, <laughs> but you know, uh, they make the, these same people carefully. make the same mistake that I just said about going yeah. into If it. you come out with a huge meal, expect explosive diarrhea. That's just what's <laughs> going to happen. First hand account. If you do that, uh, your, your digestive system essentially turned off during the fast. Um, and it'll turn on and it'll vacate very quickly if you consume too much, uh, all at once. I recommend having a small meal that's easily digestible. Like a broth or a soup. soup just yeah. something that's easily digestible yeah. that you normally you can eat and I feel okay. Pho has become my like yeah, go-to. Yeah. Well, it's I got like, nice sodium in it too. It does. Yeah. So high, high in sodium. It's got a little, some protein in there. It's a broth. It's just, it's just not a heavy, easy. Yeah. Most people don't have any intolerances to like a, a chicken, you like know, rice pho- noodle. Yeah. Rice noodle, chicken broth type of meal. Uh, it's very, very satisfying, digests really, really well. But also keep in mind, since you're already doing this, even if you're doing it for like detachment reasons for other things, it's always a great opportunity. Um, this is why I like to still include this in my, my routine You know, now is that to really highlight how foods how foods are affecting you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you're slow. I like to slowly introduce different food groups to see like, oh, that's interesting. That that food like doesn't agree with me as yeah, well as I yeah. thought it did, you know? And you're and you'll become you're hypersensitive after you fast like that. And so it helps people that are trying to become we talk on the show all the time about trying to become aware of like how foods affect your mood, your energy, your digestion. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? After a fast, those signals are louder than they ever are. And so if you were going to go into or come out of a fast and your part of your intentions are, I really want to make a better relationship with food and get better connected. The guys always talk about, you know, pay attention after you eat, like your stool and your mood and your hair and your skin. And like, I don't know. I don't notice any of that stuff. I, I don't know. Now is the time to try and become better connected to those things. And this is a great way to do that. After you come that fast, you slowly introduce different food groups, especially the ones that are on that list of like, you know, most likely to be uh, a problematic for people and pay attention to yeah. how they affect you. You will know the alarm will be much louder now than what it was say two weeks ago. Yeah. Now if you did like a 24 hour fast or a 48 hour fast, you're, you're, you're probably not going to lose any muscle. Um, it's unlikely that you'll lose muscle, but you will lose weight on the scale. Um, that is water weight. Okay, expect to gain it back when you go back to eating normal. Do not become attached to the scale during and after fasting unless you want to trigger yourself. Really should be no reason for you to weigh at all. No, no, you should, yeah. don't weigh yourself yeah, at all. Yeah, before or after. It's like, yeah, why? Just leave it because what you'll notice is a swing of five to eight pounds that can, depending on the person, feel exciting or scary and then either relieving or scary. So, don't weigh yourself. It's a terrible, uh, terrible strategy. Also, people ask, should I or could I work out during the fast? You know, I if I was doing a 24-hour, this is me personally, right? If I do a 24-hour fast, I typically can work out like I normally do. Anything longer than that, my workouts are reduced in intensity. But here's the main message that I want to give people when they're fasting. When you're fasting and you're doing it for the right reasons, it has nothing to do with fitness, fat loss, muscle building. So don't work out. Don't worry about working. Yeah, out. I don't That's like not the to. priority. Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't like to and I don't like to recommend to it because of what we just you just said. Yeah. If the reason is not for fat loss or building muscle or any of those Which purposes, it shouldn't be. Yeah. then working out or not working focus. out has no rel- it, it isn't relevant at all. So why? Mm-hmm. So why and the, and you don't have any fuel for that workout anyways, so why? Mm-hmm. And you're not eating any calories, so it's like it's a, why? You just instead use that opportunity that all the time you're going to gain back. You be you know the thing that I think is always fascinating uh, that and never fails to like realize you realize like wow how much time humans spend around thinking about food prepping food and eating food oh, yeah. and now all of a sudden you have like hours of your day you get back immediately use that for other reasons to to work inward to spend time with your family do something that you haven't done that you've been meaning to do like this is not the time for me to go train at all yeah and by the way fasting uh, can be applied to anything you feel attached to any worldly thing. So you could fast from electronics. You could fast if you have a bad relationship with exercise from exercising for a little while. You could fast from, of course, alcohol or other substances. So this detachment practice extends itself beyond just food. And there's tremendous value in detaching 
and reshaping your relationship to things that you may feel chained to. Um, so again, fasting for the right reasons, great. For the wrong reasons, absolute terrible strategy. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free health and fitness guides. We have a ton of them on there and they can help you with your health and fitness goals. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano and Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. 